Hey guys, Pat for This Line Bound here. And I wanted to talk to you guys about Corona, but not really about Corona, if you'll bear with me. There's an old Irish curse, I guess you could say, where it says, may you, have inter may you live in interesting times. And I guess we could call these interesting times. When we have, the last prediction I heard is that roughly 70% of the Earth's population will be infected with the coronavirus at the end of a year. That's a big number. And when you consider that the mortality rate of it is roughly 3%, that tabulates out to be uh, 160 million people. And that's about 21 Seattle Washingtons. That's a lot. It's a scary number. And as we sit around our own homes and are being quarantined and hiding and fearing the virus, it just builds on itself when we realize too that the factory of the world, China, has kind of turned itself off, which leads us to the next question of what's going to happen to all the cool stuff that we buy and all the businesses we work in that sell those cool things that we buy. And there's the potential of there being major recession or even possible depression. We just don't know. And that's ultimately the worst part about it is because all of the predictions that we have could be not as bad as they sound or worse than they sound. And we just don't know. The only thing that we really can say and do know is that it's going to be hard. It's going to be a challenging set of months, six months, a year. We just don't know. We're going to have a hard time. And that's really what I wanted to talk about here was not the virus itself, not about washing your hands, not about uh, ways to stay healthy in order to avoid the virus. It's about what do we do as communities when times are just hard. And my wife and I both have relatives that were alive during the Great Depression. And we've talked to them about it, my grandmother and her grandmother. And my greatest takeaway from talking to them over time about the Great Depression was the value of supporting each other through community. My wife's grandmother told us, you know, stories about when one home didn't have enough food to feed the kids, there was a neighbor inevitably that did and would take in and house the kids that were hungry and didn't have enough food. They were a community, they were a tribe, they supported each other. They're the ones that made it through with the easiest time. And it's easy when we're overwhelmed and burdened by fear and anxiety to do the easy thing and cry out, I am suffering, why won't somebody help me, how dare you? But the truth of the matter is, is that there is no courage without fear. And this is a moment where we have to grab our courage as families, cities, states, nations. Instead of saying, I am suffering, how dare you? Say, you are suffering, how can I help? What role can you play to, make the e to ease the suffering and make the life better of someone near and dear to you? Because if things are just going to get hard, and the worst part is, is we don't know how, the best thing we can do is be ready to be of service. So I hope that's something that can help you moving forward and keeping that in mind, keeping your loved ones and family and friends in heart. And just remember that whatever you do for this land, you inevitably do for everybody.